This morning and as promised this particular conversation the recently published expropriation bill has renewed discussions on land redistribution among experts activists and the general public now the legislation was gazetted on friday and submitted to parliament for further consideration should it be passed government says it will make provision for expropriation without compensation and ensure that it complies with the constitution now to share his impressions on these uh, latest developments is advocate Tembegan Ngugai Tobi, a lawyer and author of uh, the, the Land is Ours. Advocate Ngugai Tobi, thanks for speaking to us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry I couldn't connect on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, at this point, we're just glad we have uh, something so we can hear you and the conversation can continue. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> so, Advocate Lugai Tobi, let me start by canvassing your views on the latest developments in this matter. Yeah, I mean, my criticism has been that uh, this appears to be a thoughtless exercise. The reason why that criticism is that harsh is because Parliament, through the subcommittee on the amendments to Section 25 of the Constitution, is engaged in the process to change the Constitution, which I personally disagree with, but nevertheless the process is ongoing. In the midst of that, you then have a change to the expropriation legislation without having finalized the current uh, constitutional debate. The way the law works in South Africa is that the law takes its cue from the constitution. So the illogicality of the step that has now been taken is that the wording of the constitution would inform legislation, but if legislation already exists, it might have to be revised again to make it in line with the future wording of the Constitution. The present legislation that is being draft legislation that is before Parliament is premised entirely on Section 25 and its expropriation provisions as they currently exist. There is no logic to doing that at all. And if they don't want to amend the Constitution, they should announce to the public that there will be no amendment. If they want to amend the Constitution, they must finalize the process and then begin a process of legislation making it to align with the then uh, provision of the Constitution. So, in your view, why is government taking the said approach? Because uh, you've spoken about this, you've written about it, uh, the, the, the fact that, you know, uh, the Constitution, as it were, does actually make uh, provision for, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for what is this, um, uh, uh, expropriation without compensation, compensation if, if one yeah, reads it carefully. So, why do you believe government is actually taking the route that they are? Yes, it depends on what route they are taking. At the moment, the government is giving out mixed and confusing signals. On the one hand, the government says that the Constitution does not make provision for expropriation without compensation, and therefore it's necessary to amend the Constitution to make that explicit. On the other hand, they accept that the Constitution permits expropriation without compensation, and that is why they are passing the Expropriation Act. The reason that I can fathom is lack of policy coordination within the state, and I use the state in broad terms because I'm quite aware that the process of amending the Constitution is being undertaken by Parliament and not by the executive. But that distinction does not matter in this case because the ANC and its National Executive Committee have endorsed, I have to believe, both the amendments to the expropriation bill as well as the amendments to the Constitution. So ultimately, I think this boils down to a problem that we have had in the past 25 years, which is a problem of policy stagnation, lack of vision, and the lack of coordination. I think the left hand simply does not know what the right hand is doing. But why not? And, and legally speaking, Advocate Ngungai Tobi, how would you rate uh, the advice that government has received on land restitution as a whole? I think it is very poor. It is very poor advice. But it is not only a legal problem. 
uh, by rating of the legal advice is that it's been extremely poor and disappointing. But I do think that one should not reduce this into a legal question alone. The problem overall is a structural problem. The government has postponed resolving the land question. What it now appears to be concerned with is appearance. It seems to want to appear to be doing something. If we did not have a crisis of land dispossession that dates back 400 years ago, if we did not have 25 years that we have essentially wasted, one could perhaps forgive the tentative steps that the government is taking. But if one takes into account that we are dealing with trying to undo 400 years of colonial land dispossession, we are trying to grapple with 25 years of essential wastage in the land reform space, then, of course, one must be intolerant of the current steps that appear to be designed to appease rather than to resolve the problem at its structural root. And then the question then becomes, uh, when it comes to the actual uh, types of property, uh, what kind of property does expropriation then ultimately apply to? Yes, under the Constitution, all property is subject to expropriation. So whether or not it is stock, whether or not it is cash, whether or not it is a house, whether or not it is land, all property that is capable of ownership and passing of ownership can be expropriated by the state. The current expropriation bill does not make a distinction between the types of properties that may be expropriated. All property is open to expropriation. The most contentious category of property, as you know, has been land. The constitutional amendment to Section 25 does not apply to all property. It applies to a subset of property known as land. Land is also not self-describing. Land is also a legally controversial question. Does land include a house? Does land exclude a house? Does land include produce, like maize? Or does land exclude produce? So those are also contentious questions about what land actually applies. But at the moment, all forms of property that are capable of being owned and capable of being disposed can be expropriation, can be expropriated. Also, all forms of property can be expropriated with nil compensation. The critical element on the positive side of what the government is doing, the critical element is to illustrate the fallacy that the current constitution is defective for not allowing expropriation without compensation. But it is also important in another respect, what the bill does, and those are the two positive aspects to it, what the bill does, is that it entrenches the role of the courts. In other words, it makes the process to be administered through an independent judiciary. So that if, for instance, the government comes for you and they say they want to take your earring, you have a place to go where you can raise a concern and there will be an independent judge deciding whether or not the government is following a fair procedure or not. But let's not make the error of describing the current bill as a land expropriation bill. It is not. It is a general property expropriation bill. So we've had at least 25 years uh, to try and effect uh, some form of transformation. And some would say we have done little to nothing in this regard. But... What, to your view, Advocate Ngugai Tobi, has actually slowed down the uh, transformation of property rights in South Africa? Let me start by answering what has not slowed down. What has not slowed down transformation of land relations has been the Constitution. The Constitution is a mandate for transformation in property relations. It imposes the duty on the state to take steps towards the redistribution of property. What has slowed down uh, property has been, in my view, three essential elements. One has been government lethargy. The government has been very slow 
in legislating on areas such as land redistribution, on areas such as expropriation, which is what they are doing now that should have been done 25 years ago, on areas uh, such as land restitution. That's been one critical problem. It's been the failure of the state to carry out its constitutional mandate. The second reason that has slowed down land reform, in fact, is not surprising. Recently, the Director General of Agriculture, Mr. Mike Mlengan, resigned. The reason he cited for his resignation is gross incompetence in the Department of Agriculture. So we don't have to speculate about the levels of incompetence. We have the Director General admitting publicly in the Farmers Weekly himself. And he also complained about the levels of corruption within the Department of Agriculture. So we have taken our eyes away from the ball and got sidetracked by elements of incompetency and corruption. There are also, I must say, there are also structural problems with the design. Okay. Have a good look, Toby. I yes. apologize for cutting you off there. Tell you what, if it's okay with you, can we carry this over into the next hour? Uh, because we just have to say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers, but I think still many important issues I'd like to pulse you on here. So please, please just do stay with us, Advocate Temega Ngugai Tobi. And uh, we are, of course, talking about uh, um, uh, land expropriation and uh, the latest developments with regard to this and uh, land expropriation without compensation the bill now before Parliament. So a very important discussion. Very and I important. think, as Advocate Nubai Tobi says, we've taken our eyes off the ball uh, in certain instances. So we'll continue this conversation. To our SABC2 viewers, that's where we have to say goodbye to you. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye, everyone.